In the 1986 film Little Shop of Horrors, Seymour discovers a plant from another world. He feeds the plant blood in order to get it to grow and to draw in customers to his place of business, the titular Little Shop. Seymour is in love with Audrey, so much in fact that he names the plant Audrey too. The plant begins to speak and instructs Seymour to murder people so that their bodies can be food for said plant. Seymour reluctantly agrees, feeding Audrey's abusive boyfriend and the shop owner to Audrey too. Seymour eventually rebels against Audrey too, and he and his love end up together in the suburbs. They live happily ever after, and this ending sucks. There are no real consequences to Seymour's actions, and the film frames his misdeeds as mere hiccups along the way to living a peaceful, carefree life. If you want to see White Flight in the 1950s set to music, this is the ending for you. However, this was not always the case. Director Frank Oz of Yoda and Miss Piggy fame originally filmed an ending in which Seymour suffers consequences for his selfishness. When the plant goes nationwide, American consumers do the same thing Seymour does and grows their own killer plants, which results in world domination. We didn't get to see this ending in the theaters, but we finally got a glimpse of it in the director's cut Blu-ray release only a few years ago. So why was the ending changed? Why did we get this plastic, flavorless ending in the theaters and in subsequent home releases for decades? Well, back when Little Shop of Horrors was prepping for release, the studio set up test screenings. The audiences loved the movie until the ending. Allegedly, some test screening audience members were hoping for a happy ending instead of the absolutely incredible puppetry and miniature sets. The studio pressured Frank Oz, and rather than kick up a fuss about it, he gave in. But what are test screenings? In order to maximize ticket sales upon release, studios hold preview screenings of early versions of the film to gauge what does and does not work. A moderator introduces the movie and advises the audience of a few things. For example, the visual effects are not always done before the test screening. After the credits, the audience members receive a list of questions. Filmmakers place a lot of value on whether or not audience members would be likely to recommend the movie to their friends because, again, this whole thing is about making the movie successful, not necessarily making the movie good. There are benefits to test screenings. Some directors find them very useful. Their careers rely on whether or not their projects turn a profit, after all. There are downsides, though. Studio executives use test screenings as a tool to enforce their pre-existing views on directors. In an expose in the Wall Street Journal a few years ago, we learned that sometimes marketing companies falsify their results to reflect the views of executives or producers to use as ammunition against the director. The ending of a movie frequently is a point of contention. Whether or not it should be happy. There's nothing wrong with a happy ending, of course, but sometimes a movie has been built from the ground up with themes and narrative devices that point toward the film needing a downer ending. Little Shop of Horrors is one such movie. With a happy ending, we ignore the message that had been building for the past hour and a half. The happy ending doesn't fit with the rest of the movie. The director's cut ending does. The tone of the movie Seven, for example, is clearly building toward tragedy. Test audiences for the film demanded that the now-famous what's-in-the-box ending be changed. Fincher refused, compromising only a little by adding some mildly hopeful narration at the end. Many other films were not so lucky, such as with I Am Legend and its tacked-on bogus ending. These are just a few examples, there are countless more. I put further reading in the description of the video. Test screenings are meant to judge the reaction of the so-called average person, but why can't the average person handle an ending that challenges them instead of giving them instant gratification? Research shows that watching tragic or sad movies, or dramas with downer endings, or even comedies with downer endings can actually make people happier because it calls attention to the more positive aspects of their own lives. It tends to make them reflect on their own lives and their own relationships. Seeking only immediate pleasure is called hedonic. Seeking truth is called eudaimonic. Test screenings judge solely on the hedonic scale because they have a narrow goal, getting audiences into theaters to spend money and then having those audiences recommend these movies to others. 
However, this conceptualization of entertainment as a purely hedonic experience, while compelling, ignores successful films that primarily make us sad. It does not explain the full spectrum of motivations for entertainment consumption. For example, from a hedonic perspective, entertainment research would be hard-pressed to explain why audiences voluntarily expose themselves to devastating movies like Schindler's List or Titanic, both of which were highly successful. Psychologists have identified many eudaimonic rewards of watching depressing, stressful, or even horrific stories. Eudaimonia is a term coined by Aristotle that defines the meaningfulness, insight, and emotions that keep us in touch with our own humanity. Aristotle believed that happiness was not related to short bursts of euphoria, like seeing Seymour and Audrey live happily ever after in the suburbs. It's far more related to virtue of character and striving for human good, which is what the director's cut ending to the film is about. It's a lesson about trying to be kind and compassionate to people in the face of temptation to be selfish. Seymour faces consequences to his actions in the director's cut, and according to the choir, the same story played out across the world with the same results. There is a kind of entitlement in believing we deserve to see a happy ending for the characters we've grown attached to. Happy endings in our own lives are marketed to us. We are told that we'll all have successful lives somewhere that's green. The director's cut ending to Little Shop of Horrors shatters this entitlement. Audrey is eaten and does indeed go somewhere that's green, like in the song, inside of Audrey too. It's not just that the director's cut ending is more satisfying and visually more spectacular, it's that it actually fits the themes of the film that were built up in the first two acts. The film itself is a commentary on happy endings, which made its fate at the hands of test audiences all that much more painful.